Welcome back to Switzer. There are many wealth hazards out there, but one that can really rip your super in half is a divorce. And the question is, is it even messier if you have a self-managed super fund where a husband and wife trustees have to split the fund? Super expert Tony Negline of Financial and Technical Solutions is here to give us all the gory details. How are you, mate? Very well. Let's start wide. Super funds generally, husband and wife say, or partners, they split. What happens to the super fund? Well, many years ago, super was not an asset, so you could basically have as much money as you like in the fund. Those, those days are gone for about mm. the last decade. Right. So really it's just a, now an asset of a relationship, mm. and so it's like your, your house, and it's like your shares, and it's like your artwork, or whatever mm. else you own, and it's just all lumped together, and then either you decide personally, you know, collectively, or you get the courts if you can't make mm. it, if you can't come to a, an amicable agreement, to get them to decide how to split your so assets, including super. Imagine if the, the, the guy had 600 and the woman had, say, 400 because she was at home with the kids. Mm -hmm. Or she had less. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. but this is if it was, if a simple figure, mm -hmm. adds up to a million. Mm -hmm. Would, generally speaking, you'd ha go, walk away with 500 each? Well, it, it, or the it, formula it, can be even more difficult. Oh, yeah, the foot, well, see, what, what happens is they basically tote up all your assets, mm -hmm. you know, every asset, including the super. Yeah. So they basically say, okay, well, the total assets of the relationship, let's say you've got one in super yeah. and you've got one outside super, mm -hmm. they might say, okay, well, it's split 50-50, mm -hmm. how do you want it all divvied up? Mm -hmm. And let's say that the, the wife might say, I want all the super. In which case she'll end up with, and let's say the, the courts say, okay, well, 50-50 is a good split. Yeah. She might walk away with a mill, so she'll take the 600 of the super of the husband's, mm. and he'll take all the other assets. Mm. Or you, you, might have, you might flip it around the other way, or might take half and half, or right. you basically come to a, a, an amicable. And the ATO allows super to change between, you know, taking money out of super is difficult, but the, the, the ATO permits that kind of exchange? Yeah, well, it's, it's actually part of the formal superannuation laws. Right. So there's, there's specific legislation that governs all this stuff. Right. And uh, you have a for formal discovery process mm -hmm. and you have a formal response process and all the rest of it, and trustees have got to respond in a certain yeah. time. Um, but, yes, basically what happens is that the money then you know, as needed, mm -hmm. will move between each person's super accounts. Let me play devil's advocate. Uh, what about the super that was accumulated before they met? So imagine someone's got 10 years worth of super before they, they met. Did people try to say, well, that super should be separate from the super that accumulated when we were partnerships? You get that kind of messy... You, get, you definitely get that kind of messy, messy arrangements going on. Yeah. Um, what will happen is they'll say, OK, well, the line in the sand was that, you know, I had accumulated 500 grand before we got together. Yeah. Um, and since that time, I've, you know, we've accumulated another 500 grand. That's the only bit that's up for grabs. Yeah. And of course, the other side, you know, it's an adversarial court system. Yeah. The other side saying, no, 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 come on, I, you know, we, okay. we, we want to lump them all together. Okay. Let's go to SMSFs now. Is it more messy? Um, well, look, in some ways it's potentially simpler because, you, are, you know, the trustees are the, the members and they can hopefully come to an amicable agreement themselves. Mm. So effectively what, what can happen, though, is that once, once the dust has settled and the relationship's over and the assets have been split, yeah. you've then got two... You've got two parts of a couple who really don't, you know, their lives are separate, yeah. and, but they're in the same superannuation fund. Yeah. So effectively what you've got to do is you've then got to move, you think most of the time you've got to move one person out of the fund, mm -hmm. so they've got to set up a separate arrangement, you've got assets. Or they could roll into, a, into an industry fund or something like that, couldn't yeah, so, or, or there might be assets in the fund where you say, well, look, you know, I want the BHP shares or I want the CBA shares. Can you do that? Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there are CGT concessions in relation to that if the assets are split as part of a, okay. a marriage separation. Well, on that same subject, if you've got, say, a family of four people in there, two, two younger... Two, two kids, yep. Two kids, two adults. Now, at a certain stage of, of their investment life, the kids still might want to be really risky and the parents want to become really conservative. When they split up the, the, the assets in there, could the, the, the kids say, look, Mum and Dad, you take the ones where there'd be all capital gain if you sold them, because there's no good to us if we don't want to pay the capital gains tax, and we'll have all the ones that have no capital gain. It'd be very generous children if they did that, but you can do that. It doesn't have to be split up 50-50. Uh, well, it, it, everything has to be done equitably, yeah. and obviously the children, when they when they walk away, they have to, you know, if they've got 10 grand in the fund, they yeah. have to be given 10 grand worth of, worth of whatever. Yeah. Um, but what if it's 10 grand worth of crap shares versus 10 grand worth of good shares? That could be a, a, an arguable point, couldn't it? Well, it could, and, and obviously, 
you know, in those situations, people are going to want to, you know, do things that are appropriate. Yeah. And but you basically you can you can decide that as long mm. as you're. As long as everyone agrees. Correct. So everyone everyone has to be on the same page yeah. and and who arbitrates when there's a dispute. In a self-managed super fund? Uh, well, most trustees, most trustees have no formal mechanism. No, I thought that. Um, and it'll end up in the courts. <laughs> Worst case situation. Yeah. Um, and of course, that's very expensive, as you yeah. know. And so uh, sometimes, sometimes it's a good idea to bang heads together to say, "Now, look, come on, we need to, we, we need to save everyone here many, yeah. many thousands of dollars. Let's come. Let's." Can let's you roll on your trustee when you first start a, a, a process? What, whereby if you do leave, there, there is a set process to work out who gets what, but it's too hard. Uh, you, you could do that, but of course circumstances change. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit like a will. You know, you can say, okay, well at the moment I want everything to go to my, my spouse. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, as I said, your circumstance, the, the issue is whether or not your dispute resolution process is, is good, is appropriate in five or ten years' time. Okay. Now, by the way, uh, Tony is actually going to be talking about this in the Switzer Super Report on Thursday. If you want to know more, you can go to that website as well. Tony, thanks for joining us, mate. Pleasure. So that's the show for the night. We're out of time. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you tomorrow night.